What was the first NFL game you ever called, Al? Which one was Believe that? it or not, in 1971, 71, a 71. million years ago. Okay. So what happened was I was doing the Cincinnati Reds. And at that time, NBC had the rights to both the baseball playoffs mm -hmm. and the World Series. So Kurt Gowdy, who was the number one NFL announcer, was doing the World Series mm -hmm. and, and one of the playoff events. And Jim Simpson, who was the number two announcer, he was doing the other league championship series. So they had to move announcers like Jay Randolph became the number one guy, and they hired me to do a point-to-point -point telecast. I think the date might have been October 3rd, 1971. Mm -hmm. I did Buffalo at Minnesota <laughs> as a – it only went to Buffalo. In those years, the you, you had the blackout rule, so the game wasn't even televised in Minnesota at the old Metropolitan Stadium. So you were the, just talking to the, Buffalo, the basically? The game only went – not only did it go only to Buffalo, yes. but the NBC station in Buffalo – was carrying mm -hmm. the baseball. So this was on a UHF station. Oh, my god! And I did it with Johnny Morris, mm -hmm. who was still, you'll still see his name in the Chicago Bears record book among great receivers. He holds a number of records. So Johnny and I did that game. Among the players in that game, O.J. Simpson, Al Cowlings. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Uh, yes. Think about that. <laughs> but, 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 Bud Grant. Bud Grant. I think Norm Sneed may have been the quarterback yes. for, for Minnesota at that time. Good memory, um, Al. That's correct. The game was 19 nothing. 19 nothing. Yeah. It wasn't a very good. There you go. Right. Octo was it October 3rd? October 3rd, 70, 3rd 71. 71. Yeah. yeah. So that was my first ever NFL game. And then a couple of weeks later, I did Buffalo at the Jets. You can look that up, I think, maybe on the 17th. Buffalo at the All Jets. Right. Stand by. Uh, again, blacked out in New York. Yeah, yeah. UHF in <laughs> Buffalo. And uh, Namath is, a, I think, you know, Joe had to be playing in that game. Yeah, unless 1971. He was yeah. From back in that day. Right. And so OJ and Al Cowling, so no, nobody from the Stern Show called in in the middle of that no, game no, to there prank. No, there was no Baba <laughs> Booey to you all. <laughs> Bob, that Bob, just Bob. happened in the mid-90s no, when, yeah. when you guys had some... 1994, together. yeah, in June. Chris, oh. am I right about that? Not oh. October 17th of uh, oh 71? My. Yeah, October 17th, Buffalo and the Jets. Uh, the Buffalo and the Jets. The Juice had a touchdown. Let's see. Who, yep. uh, the Jets started... No, Bob Davis played quarterback for the Jets. Okay, so I think Joe must have... He was hurt. Yeah. yeah. That was just the beginning of the 54-year-old darkness <laughs> retreat. <laughs> that's yes. made, that might actually end. Uh, Emerson Boozer had 116 oh, a, yards. I mean, that's as but good of course. as it come, man. <laughs> but of course. Yeah. But did you know that you had a, you know, you had a special, obviously you could call anything in anywhere at any time, but did you know that there was a special relationship that you had with football at that point in time? Well, I loved all sports. Right. And remember, my, my career was, in the early years, built around baseball. Yeah. So here I was as a kid getting the Cincinnati Reds job. So I'm doing the, the big red machine with Rose, Bench, Perez. Uh, Morgan would come over the next year. Uh, Griffey Sr. is a rookie in and 73. Sparky Sparky's, Sparky's the manager. I mean, that was, you know, I did the Reds for three years, and, you know, I've talked about this a number of times, but I knew I had one of the great teams in the history of baseball. Right. And they were. And yet I had to leave after three years because the San Francisco Giants tripled my salary. Rich, we all know, follow the money, right? <laughs> when it's three times what you're getting paid, you sure? you've got to follow the money. So off I go to San Francisco. And so when did you get a regular NFL? So what happened, uh, it's interesting. So those are the only two games I did when I was with the Reds. Yeah. And then when I went, to, one of the reasons I went to do the Giants is that they were going to give me Sundays off, even in the baseball season, if I could do the NFL. And NBC hired me to do about seven or eight games that year, regional games in 74. 74. I left there after 74. I did one year at CBS. Yeah. Uh, and my I had a ton of partners through the years, including uh, I started out with Wayne Walker, uh, the former Lion linebacker. I had Johnny Unitas for a game. What was that like? Uh, oh. That was, Chris, you want to look this up? This is 75, <laughs> New Orleans at Oakland, <laughs> middle of the season. I love this. Johnny Unitas says, this is when... I met so we're living in Menlo Park across the the bay from Oakland. Yeah, because I'm doing the the Giants in those years, 
And so I, I went over to practice on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. And who did I meet for the first time? John Madden. John was coaching the Raiders. And after practice, I went into John's office. And he was a big baseball fan, and he was excited to talk about the Giants because he used to listen to all the Giants games, loved the Giants. This is your first time you ever first met time John ever Madden. First time I ever met John Madden. First, I'm sitting in John Madden's office. This is, Chris, 1975? 1975, yeah. Okay. Uh, November 9th was the game. November, okay. So it's the middle of the season. I'm in John's office. Little, you know, would I know that we'd become you know, of partners for seven years, a quarter of a century later. And one of the things we talked about was that uh, John, he didn't know how much longer he wanted to coach because he, you know, he hated flying for starters. Yeah. And his dream at that point, and we talked about this, was to get an RV or a camper and travel around the country. And we talked about Steinbeck's tr travels with Charlie. So I'm not sure John necessarily wanted to travel with a dog, <laughs> but John wanted to get into a camper and travel around the country, which eventually he would do in a bus. And, you know, did all of those years. Because John never got on a plane after 1979. Left the Raiders, went to CBS, and then just feared flying to the extent that John told me the last time he was on a flight, he was doing a game for CBS in Tampa. Mm -hmm. And he's living in the Bay Area. And uh, he there's a stopover in Houston. And he got so panicked on the Tampa to Houston leg, he said, he closed his eyes, if we land safely, I'm getting off this plane and never getting on another plane. So what did he do? He got off the plane. Mm -hmm. His luggage continued on to Oakland or San Francisco. <laughs> and he went to the train station. And that was the last time John got on a plane. <laughs> it did him in. It really did. You know, with John, it was probably more claustrophobia uh -huh. than anything. Because we always had a hard time with John, even in an elevator. Is that Even, right? Yeah, because John would always have to have a, a room on a very low floor so he could either walk up or have somebody with him. But, you know, it, it, we had to basically, you know, people at the end of a game, if you had an elevator from the press box right. down to wherever we're going. Jammed. He, he, well, no, he would have to have it cleared. And oh. people thought, well, you know, who is this guy? You know, but it was a, just a case of he just couldn't be in there with anybody he didn't know and he couldn't be there wouldn't be in there with any more than two or three people. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.